secret warehouse, you can bet that something devious is about to happen. The magician lowers the sheet, and the assistants carefully place it up and over the girl's head. She had her chance to get out of this trick before it started. Let's see how she ends up. The magician raises the sheet to reveal the girl no longer has a middle. Take a closer look. Amazingly, the girl's midsection has actually disappeared. Incredible. And she's still smiling. Well, that's one way to lose a few inches around the middle. So, how does the magician remove the lady's midsection while her head and legs remain visible for all the world to see? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician meets the overdressed girl who is standing in one spot. The fact that she's wearing this curious costume and that she never moves is a clue that something is up. The first secret is hidden in the long skirt, this sturdy wire frame which holds the skirt in place. When the sheet is lifted in front of the girl, she just sneaks out of the back and sinks down behind it. With the skirt removed from the frame, we can see her sit down. The next secret is that there is a false panel in the wall. A stagehand behind the wall removes the panel so the girl can lie back and out of sight. Then, a matching panel with a small cutout for her body is replaced, making the wall look solid. This allows her legs to be in view of the audience while her body has vanished. But what about her head and the rest of her upper body? The secret here is that the magician has employed identical twins. Before the trick begins, the second girl is positioned behind the wall on this rolling platform. The cinder blocks on the back of the platform are critical to keep it from tipping over. While the first girl is busy reclining into the fake wall, a second false panel is removed, allowing her identical twin sister to be rolled out into place. This is the girl who gets the sheet draped over her head. The cinder blocks are crucial to ensure that the platform's center of gravity remains behind the wall, allowing the girl to safely ride out beyond the wall without tipping over, ruining the trick, her sister, and herself. Another false panel with a cutout conceals the larger hole in the wall. You might have noticed the girl's unusual posture. This is because she's got to lift her head and upper body at an awkward angle to make it look like she's standing. The magician carefully arranges the sheet over her head and shoulders in an attempt to hide the uncomfortable position. The bulky costume hangs down to hide the underside of the rolling platform. The audience believes they are seeing one girl with no middle. But you know the secrets. Before the magician begins his next trick, we should remind you that he is a professional and that it's never a good idea to play with fire. He'll use the flame from this ordinary candle. Watch the flame. The magician transfers it from the candle to his thumb. Next, he transfers the flame back to the candle, where it belongs. Amazing. And since the trick is over, he blows out the candle, just to be on the safe side. So how does the magician transfer the flame from the candle to the tip of his thumb, then transfer it back without burning himself? Here are the secrets. The candle is real and so is the flame. Remember, there is an element of danger. The big secret is a small gimmick hidden in his right hand, a flesh-colored plastic shell known as the magician's thumb. It contains a wick in the end. There's the wick. If we look inside, we can see plenty of wick and fireproof padding to protect his thumb. The wick is coated with lighter fluid, which burns brightly without burning the wick too quickly. When it appears that he is transferring the flame to his thumb from the candle, 
He's really just lighting the wick on the fake tip and using the plastic to extinguish the candle. The audience sees the flaming thumb and thinks he can hold fire in his bare hand. To put the flame back on the candle, he simply uses the thumb tip to light the candle's wick and then uses the wax to snuff out the flame on his plastic thumb. Now that the candle is lit, how does he vanish the fake thumb? He simply hides it in his palm while he is making his magical gestures. It's gone. And now you know the secrets. The magician will perform an illusion that first appeared in the early 1900s, then was updated in the mid-1970s for television audiences. It involves this eight-sided pyramid. Legend has it that evil spirits reside in rooms with square corners, so an eight-sided room should be free of ghosts. We'll see. The magician examines the eight-sided pyramid. There's nothing unusual about it, except that it's an eight-sided pyramid in the middle of an empty warehouse. He calls in two of his beautiful assistants to help him open the doors, revealing that the pyramid is empty and free of evil spirits, at least visible ones. But maybe he can use some magic to conjure some friendly spirits. The assistants return with a sheet and a magical conjuring robe. You can't expect the magician to conjure without the right outfit. I like his personal stylist. Apparently, so does he. Easy, big guy. You've got conjuring to do. That's better. Back to work. Magic before pleasure. With a flourish, the magician steps inside the pyramid and goes to work. He takes the sheet from his assistant and holds it over the opening. If he can catch a spirit trying to escape from the eight-sided contraption, this is the best place to do it. He gets ready, then raises the sheet. And what's this? He's got a little movement beneath the sheet. Good for him. Looks like he's got a live one. Not exactly sure what's happening under there, but he seems to be enjoying it. Let's see if he can catch another one. After all, there's another girl standing by with another sheet, which means she wants to see some action too. The magician is happy to oblige, taking the sheet and spreading it out in front of the doorway. He raises it up, hoping he's got some magic left. You can do it. And he does. More jumping under the sheet. This one is even livelier than the first. Twice in one night. Really good for him. But I don't think he's done. After all, the other girl is back with another sheet. The magician steps back into the pyramid, ready to make the magic happen all over again. He gets ready, summoning all of his powers to see if he can make this girl happy, as he takes the sheet from her and spreads it out. He concentrates hard and raises the sheet. giving it a couple of jiggles to get things going. And what do you know? He's managed to find some life for the third straight time. And this one's even bigger than the other two. I have to hand it to the masked magician, but he's had enough. So he heads back into the pyramid to relax in his fancy robe. The girls close the doors to give him some privacy while the spirits continue to do their spirit thing. As the girls begin to open the cabinet, the spirits are revealed to be two more beautiful assistants. But what about the one in the middle? It's the masked magician. Where did he come from? The pyramid is empty. So maybe the masked man has been in touch with his spirit side all along. So, 
How did the magician conjure spirits from his empty eight-sided pyramid, then appear as one of them? Here are the secrets. When the trick begins, the magician shows us that the pyramid is empty, but it's not. There are two mirrors built into the inside of the pyramid. See the girl's reflection? Hidden in a compartment behind the mirror are his two assistants and a body double. Here they are from the front. It's a tight fit, but the body double doesn't seem to mind. First, the magician holds the sheet high, covering the view inside the pyramid. At this moment, one of the assistants swings open the mirror, steps out of the compartment, closes the mirror behind her, and sneaks in behind the sheet. The magician drapes the sheet over her, and she moves backward toward the audience. Then the magician raises a second sheet. This is when the second assistant steps out from behind the mirror and slips behind the sheet. It's her turn to walk backward toward the audience. Here's how it would look without the sheet in place. With the sheet, it appears that the magician has conjured another spirit. And if you were wondering why the magician was wearing a magic robe, here's another secret. Most magicians who perform this trick don't go around wearing masks, so they have to use a cloak like this to distract the audience and obscure their identity. Their doubles wear identical robes, so the audience doesn't notice the big switch. When the magician raises the third sheet, the switch takes place. The magician's double comes out of the compartment and takes his place holding the sheet, while the magician sneaks under the sheet and walks towards the audience. Without the sheet, this is how it looks. That's the double, standing in the doorway of the pyramid. As the magician bounces toward the audience, the double heads inside the pyramid. As soon as the doors are closed, the double folds the secret mirrors against the side panels and simply sneaks out of the back into the darkness of the warehouse. The assistants reveal themselves and then reveal the magician as the pyramid is opened to show that he's vanished. But you know the secrets. Next, the magician will demonstrate the magical powers of his superhuman strength using this ordinary light bulb. Keep your eye on the bulb. He places it firmly in his right hand. Next, he covers it with his left and squeezes. Like magic, the light bulb has been pulverized into invisible dust, vanished into the ether. He's done it again. So how did the magician make an ordinary light bulb disappear without a trace? Here are the secrets. First, concealed in his right hand is a retractable cord that goes inside